day two of the Ferrari build at the Red Barn. So yesterday we got things test fit and now we know we need to do some notching of the trunk, the remaining trunk floor. I got a little cut, some cut lines marked out where I think I'm gonna do the surgery. Um, and then once this is pulled out of the way, we'll be set to uh, get the motor into a much closer to final position um, and really start to see what's what. So here we go. Well, okay, let's see what we think of this. So I sliced a little narrower than I originally planned, figuring, you know, better to cut less now, and if I need, I can cut more later. But the idea was, uh, I'm not sure I'm going to pull this off or not, but I just bent this up out of the way thinking that um, perhaps what I can do is maybe you know, slice it here, position this as part of, you know, reuse this piece as part of this hump. But you can see that if I get it aligned a little better, you can sort of see that that tranny hanger mount is um, maybe not going to cooperate. But we'll see what we can do. Again, this is more about making everything fit. Um, all right, so clearance-wise, you can see, well, you can sort of see, the back of the trans is... I don't know, inch and a half-ish, maybe, inch away from the rear panel. So that's good. I've got clearance at the cam gear. That's actually the narrow side. It's interesting, stuff that got to consider that always sneaks up on you if you're not paying attention, or at least does to me, is because of the cylinder offsets, right, this bank of cylinders, the driver's side bank of cylinders, notice the cam gear is a little bit deeper and sits a little bit farther forward on the engine because of the cylinder offset. So, you know, pay attention to which side of the engine you're measuring from because one side's gonna have more clearance than the other. And I hate those kind of surprises. Anyway, uh, you can see it's a whole bunch higher and we were completely correct. This is, um, it was gonna have to come up a bunch and now it can. So here's the acid test. I'm gonna go under the car Ugh. and you can see now, uh, sorry for the horrible video shaky. But um, here I'm gonna use a level on, you know, to show where the bottom of the motor is relative to the chassis. And you can see that we are not the low point. The motor and trans will not be the low point. The bottom of the chassis will be. Um, so it'll hit the, hit the pan. Anything that goes under the car that hits a pan, you know, if I, assuming we can get over it, yikes, will uh, not be damaging to the motor. And that's about the best we're going to be able to do. It's not like it's going to be a rally car or anything. And I suppose I could build a skid plate of some sort. But all things considered, now you also get an idea of just how much that plenum is going to stick out of everything. Which, like I said, I think is going to be super duper cool. Um, you know, versus trying to hide it. So uh, I'm thinking we're going to copy the old supercharged blower hot rod hoods and just have that bad boy poke right up out the top of everything and say, look at me. Uh, anyway, so uh, that's where the motor's going to go. I think I might, I might, I'm going to have to try out, trial fit the um, cam belt guards because I don't think I want to run without them. No telling if something got up in there, that would be bad, bad news. So I may have to move the motor back a tick. And note too that, um, like on my LS car, I ended up notching that rear panel because there's room between that panel and the bumper. So if, worst case, if the trans, if the whole uh, contraption had to go back a little bit more, that would be okay. And again, different side, but you can see that axle angle to the stub axle input on the trailing arm, it's fine. So even if we have to go back a bit, we are home free. On all this stuff so not bad for the first uh, half an hour of work here on a beautiful morning at the Red Barn and uh, we'll be back with more later how's that so what I do today I got the engine fitted in the height and approximately for approximate fore aft position that I'm pretty happy with. And as you saw earlier, um, I've got the base of the sump and the trans um, higher than 
the base of the chassis. So we're good there. And I just couldn't resist trying to get a better feel for how this would look relative to uh, how much it's going to poke out of the engine grill and trunk. But there it is. So I had an old engine lid lying around. Funny what you would collect as a parts hoarder. Um, and I think you can see, I can, hard to tell, but I can get a better radius in here um, just to have it match a little bit better. So uh, whether I use this lid, this engine lid, and modify it, you know, patch some stuff back into it, or start over with another one once I finalize the, the measurements <clears throat> is yet TBD. But um, it's going to be pretty neat. I mean, when you see it from from how it's going to poke through, it's not too horrible. And again, yes, the trunk's going to come, you know, right into here at that same height. So um, after we cut this and tip them down, like you saw uh, Jeff do on his Al Ferrari build uh, to get the, the throttle bodies underneath the deck lid, um, that'll make a big difference. And then one of my favorite views of this is as you look at it, through the driver's uh, driver's side window, or you know, when you look at it through the windshield, it's just going to look epically cool. So this is turning out to be just, just as as awesome as I was hoping it would. So, not a bad first couple days. Um, we're going to keep at it. It's going to get messy from here on. I got to pull everything back out the bottom, lose the engine tray, which is this sheet metal you see. That holds that rubber. You can see that rubber seal channel that goes all the way, all the way out to what are called the longitudinals, the main chassis uh, rails that you see sitting back in there. So those all go away. And then I think just because it would be better, I think what I'm gonna do. I just had a little piece of metal there supporting uh, the, the deck lid. You can see it's all wonky now because it's been cut apart. That'll also obviously be stiffened. But with that clearance. At the uh, at the cam belts, without the guards on them, I think I am going to go ahead and uh, go after tweaking that firewall a little bit so I can move the motor forward just a tick. Partly because when I do that, it'll end up allowing this tube. Well, you can sort of see. I want to get that hanger directly under this tube, and the farther forward I get the tube, you can see on that side where that sort of step is in that secondary piece of sheet metal. I'd really like this to be right about here. I don't know if I'm going to get it all the way to that point. Obviously, that's going to get plated to be stronger and also tied in with the rest of the chassis in ways that I haven't yet worked out. But if I can scoot the whole drivetrain forward just a bit, you know, I got clearance up here that I can still play with. And as long as I can clear the firewall, uh, I was underneath the car earlier and the pulleys and the belts look like they'll be in okay shape too. So Anyway, as I said, there's day two, and we're just going to keep chipping away until this bad boy's running. Hope you're enjoying it so far. Thanks much.